this video, you will see the proper procedures for routine maintenance of these valves. In the first segment, we will show you how to disassemble, inspect, and reassemble the combo valve and... Before working on any piece of abrasive blasting equipment, shut off the air at the source and depressurize the system by opening the blowdown valve and drain valve on the moisture separator. The air supply hose can then be disconnected. Make sure the air pressure is completely relieved before attempting to uncouple any of the hoses. To remove the combo valve from the pot for service, first remove the twin line hose using the 9 16 and 5 8 inch wrench. Hang the twin line hose fittings from the pot to keep them clean. Remove the four long bolts that join the base, cylinder, and cap using an 11 16 inch and the 5 8 inch wrench. Remove the cylinder assembly and set it aside. Slide the cap down and remove it from the blowdown hose. Inspect the blowdown hose for wear. If wear is apparent on the hose, inspect the inside of the cap for abrasive wear. Leakage of the blowdown hose may have abraded the pinch block inside the cap or the holes through which the blowdown hose passes, leaving sharp edges on the cap. If the cap is worn, it should be replaced. If sufficient length of blowdown hose remains, you may cut the hose below the worn area and reattach it to the pot. If the blowdown hose is less than 18 inches in length, it should be replaced. Look into the combo valve base and inspect the seat of the air valve. Feel the seat to be sure it is free of abrasion or rough spots that may keep the valve plug from seating properly. Serious wear indicates the base should be replaced. Use a 7 16 inch wrench to remove the lock nut and the valve plug assembly from the shaft. Slide the lower rod guide and O-ring off the shaft and lay them aside. With the valve body on the workbench, withdraw the piston assembly from the cylinder. Inspect the cylinder bore for scoring and wear. While compressing the spring between the piston and the upper rod guide with your hands, unscrew the pinch ram from the end of the shaft. Carefully release the spring tension and remove the upper rod guide and spring from the shaft. Use a snap ring tool to remove the snap ring that secures the piston to the shaft. Remove the piston from the shaft and remove the O-ring. With the valve completely disassembled, you are ready to inspect critical components and reassemble the valve. Inspect the shaft for wear, particularly in areas that pass through the upper and lower guides. Clean surface marks with fine emery cloth or replace if necessary. Replace the O-ring on the shaft. Install the piston with the spring shoulder toward the large end of the shaft and replace the snap ring. Remove and replace the piston seal. Note the cupped edge of the seal faces the small end of the shaft. Be careful when handling the piston since damage to the seal may cause valve failure. Check the spring for cracks and measure its length. To be sure it provides sufficient energy to retract the pinch ram and seat the air valve, it must measure at least five inches in length. If the spring is damaged or measures less than five inches, it must be replaced. Remove and replace the upper rod guide seal. Slide the spring over the shaft and seat it around the piston shoulder. Install the upper rod guide so that the new seal faces away from the spring. Squeeze the piston and upper rod guide together, compressing the spring. Then carefully screw the pinch ram onto the shaft before releasing spring tension. With the spring tension pushing against the ram, insert a Phillips head screwdriver through the pilot hole in the shaft and rotate the ram until it seats against the shaft. Remove and replace the seal from the lower rod guide with the cupped edge of the seal toward the bushing. Place the cap closed end down on your work surface. Place the cylinder down on the cap. Apply a light synthetic lubricant or anti-seize compound to the bore of the cylinder. Carefully slide the shaft assembly into the cylinder 
the shaft and piston should move freely. Lift the assembly free of the cap, install the lower rod guide and O-ring, then install a new valve plug and O-rings. Place the lock nut and washer on the shaft and thread it so that the tip of the shaft appears above the nylon bushing. The valve plug will not seat properly if this nut is over tightened. The completed assembly can now be reinstalled on the pot. Remember that the twin line fitting should be up and the cap must be slid over the blowdown hose before assembly. Now install the four bolts between the cap and the base and tighten them equally in a cross pattern. After you complete the inspection and service of the combo valve, clean and reconnect the twin line hoses. Note that they are different sizes and will only fit one way. Close the air inlet on the pot, connect the air supply and turn on the air at the source. Open the air inlet on the pot and test the combo valve for proper operation by pressing and releasing the dead man control. If you observe a problem, consult the troubleshooting guide in your manual to locate and correct it. Consult, consult, cons, 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 cons.